now we're live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to ruin the intro, Mark. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, The Secret Show, episode number 237. I'm your intrepid, fearless hostess, Patricia Steer, and Mark Sargent is here to um, continue the beat, the battle cry, as it's war on the globalists. Hello, Mark. Hello. Most of my medication is expired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the secret show is when Mark and I get together once a week. It's casual and fun. And it's really an overview focusing on what's going on in the flat erm Earth realm, the flat erm realm. Flat right. erm realm, it's good. Yeah. And I was going to message you before the show and say, hey, let's have cocktails for the show. <laughs> Looks like I already started. <laughs> oh, man. You should, yeah, you should have told me I would have grabbed something. I uh, no, I didn't I didn't start drinking, but hmm. we'll do a drinking show another day. Yep. Anyway, hello to everybody in the live chat. Thank you for being here. We truly appreciate it. So, wow, lots of things are going on in Flat Earth right now, but I think we are still in a holding pattern, waiting for the next big thing to happen. Uh, what what have you got that's happening? I have to talk a little bit about D Marble. D Marble is doing some big stuff right now. But uh, do you want to start with something else? Uh, well, I mean, everything, there's a lot of things in play at the moment, Yeah. but nothing concrete. So, right. for example, you know, we, we just finished that National Geographic thing, which went pretty well, even though they're going to light us up like a Christmas tree on the 4th of July with the windows rolled up. It, that, <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be pretty heavy duty. Uh, you did a thing with CBS National and right. You know, we got to wait. I don't even know if they're going to tell you when they that airs. Yeah, I mean, they interviewed so. me for an hour. They'll probably use two minutes, probably one where I misspeak or they'll, I don't know what they'll do. Right. I don't trust mainstream media at all, but, you know, it does get the word out there. Yeah. I found out about Flat Earth on mainstream media, YouTube and Google. So, yeah. you know. We, I mean, you and I know, it, we're in kind of a weird position because, again, this is a secret show. Like, we know flat earth celebrity sightings but we can't talk about them i know <laughs> there's one i wish i could tell everybody about because we can't and, and in fact there's even more on top of the ones that we you know you and i have just talked about recently can you tell me later or will you have to no 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 the picture i sent you just a little while ago oh oh that yeah, one too i can't, oh, I can't oh. talk about that because that would affect real world things if that actually yeah. came out well the thing is, is that it doesn't really matter who these people are because yeah. if they told you you'd say oh wow that's awesome but right. just keep in mind there are closet flat earthers yeah high profile and they're in financial arenas and they're in acting they're arenas. everywhere sports uh, not that uh, being in the financial realm is a great thing or being an actor i'm not praising those particular fields but i'm just saying there's people that would be considered like high priority people who are right. involved in flat earth but i i consider all of us you know high priority i don't put a value on if somebody makes more money or has a more statusy sort of career right. but many people do who aren't involved in this awakening so yeah we I, the first off look which is why i'm such a big fan of the james bond line we have people everywhere mm. and the the reason I say that is because of something I, I, I kind of realized recently, which was it doesn't matter uh, how powerful, how beautiful, how talented, how wealthy you are, no matter what arena you're in, Flat Earth is bigger than you. It doesn't matter if you're an A-list celebrity. It doesn't matter if you're the king of France. It doesn't matter because there is no one person that is bigger than this concept, which is why Flat Earth can jump to just about any grapevine you can think of. You know, there are certain, there are certain grapevines that, that can only hold so many topics, but Flat Earth has access to everything. Uh, another line from uh, um, a Firefly, which is everything goes somewhere and Flat Earth goes everywhere. Mm, yeah, it, it absolutely is relentless. And why not? It's the most interesting story I can think of. It's what we're standing on. And it's part of the deeper understanding of everything. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's lots of conspiracies that can be can be buried in the desert and you'll never, ever hear from them. And bodies. But that's and, and bodies. <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk about that. I know. I know. But <laughs> Ixnay on the Ed Day. So <laughs> the. Um, uh, but but flat Earth is one of those giant giant things that affects you. Can't run away from it. You can't literally cannot run from it. It is the world that you're standing on, or sitting on, or laying on wherever you are right now. Doing yoga poses on sitting. Doing yoga poses. 
<laughs> right. And by the way, you're you're looking especially candid this afternoon. What are you wearing? I am wearing a corset sort of dress. So wow. Yeah, it's very hot here right now. And also there's a thunderstorm rolling in. I can hear the thunder outside and it has been raining all day. And I know where you are outside of Seattle. Also, you've got one coming. Yep. yep. The weather's been very weird. There's even been flooding in parts of Houston, which always makes me worry because of Hurricane Harvey last year, which I truly believe was in some way manufactured. Or maybe it was natural, but uh, they were doing some cloud uh, formations uh, during the event and allowing the water to just fall and the the hurricane to sit over the city and climate change you know, is a myth i paid to say that are you by who the climate people okay <laughs> 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 no no i know i absolutely believe uh, i i had a chance to watch uh, an inconvenient sequel or whatever it's called an inconvenient sequel to the truth <laughs> yeah inconvenient the, the sequel which which i clipped out a little bit part because it was fascinating to me because al gore was a big fan of the blue marble shots and he even called up from the white house desk the nasa to try to see if he could get an updated version of it since the blue marble shot in 1972 and he couldn't they wouldn't it's like sorry we say well up. you know we don't those particular artists don't work for us anymore we're gonna yeah. get different guys <laughs> and and so his idea was oh I'll 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 spearhead this new satellite thing that'll take pictures of the Earth and they del they delayed it and they dragged their feet until he was out of office and then they never had to worry about it again. Mm. But in That's there, everything. everything in politics involving space is kick the can down the road. That's yeah, the game they as play. As long as you can, yeah. Until the current crop of humans dies out and forgets all about it, and then bring it back up again. I like that you said current crop of humans. Doesn't sound sinister <laughs> in the slightest. <laughs> yeah. There will do be a culling, my friends. The, do you even read the new pages? We send them out. Oh, you sorry. Gotta wing it. That's fine. No. I, 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 everything I do has been wong. <laughs> Great word, yeah. wong. And it's trademarked by me. <laughs> <laughs> Patent pending. Exactly. And all subsidiary rights. <laughs> I do want to give a shout out to D Marble. D Marble right now is headed to Alaska with a what? group of friends. Yes, he is. He's headed to south of Fairbanks. And what he's going to do there is pretty smart. It's <laughs> taking Arctic a look sun. and seeing about the 24 hour sun. He's going to get footage. There's going to be measurements. He's going to look at the moon while he's there. They're going to be camping out in a car and sleeping in shifts. And um, he's doing real science and he's doing it for the flat earth. Is I do I do want to just say he's got a um, uh, a PayPal as well. It's uh, paypal.me, D-M-A-R-B-L-E-F-E, -E, if you want to contribute to his trip. It's being funded by that, and he's not making money off this. But, of course, it does, it's not, not free to make a trip like this. So I'll put the PayPal link for D Marble in the uh, description box of this video if you have a couple of bucks you want to toss his way. But, yeah, he right now is is winging his way and when he lands he'll be wong but uh is he, <laughs> is he taking south of fairbanks uh, and you have to forgive me you know because i'm from one of the staging points uh for for the alaska stuff seattle's like where you go before you go to alaska mm -hmm. and is he taking the alaskan ferry is he like taking his van or is he just going with other people I know he's going with other people and I don't know he did a video earlier today live streaming from the airport so um wow that's, it. that's what's happening well, that's cool. and Congratulations to D Marble for getting it done. We do a lot of talk about different things. And when it comes to the midnight sun, 24 hour sun, whatever, right. it's something that we talk about. We see videos, we um, dismiss those videos. We see that portions have been edited together to create an outcome. Right. But somebody like D Marble, who to me comes across as incredibly honest and sincere, and I've met him in person several times, with somebody like D Marble on our side going out there, what he comes back with is what it is, period. Right. And, you know, even the most uh, devoted flat earth shill hunter is not going to be able to uh, pick apart what he comes up with. Well, he's right. not a shill, of course, is what I'm saying. Shills don't do things like this. Um, and just the fact that anybody would accuse him of being a shill or any of us, that's a whole other story of craziness. But yeah. In fact, we, we've been looking, you and I have talked about this for some time, we've been looking for shills in the community. We we call them a different name, but I have nobody on my list. 
You know that. Now, I have people I, who have um, in my mind that do things that would go under the category of, well, that's kind of suspicious, or that's kind of weird, or that's kind of depressing, or that's kind of sad, or that's kind of unnecessary, but I don't ever put the stamp of agent on anybody right. because it's been put on me. I mean, so many things have been put on me, therefore I never, and I know they're all wrong, so that's why I would never accuse anybody else of doing it. Right. Yes, some people have turned out to be disappointments as human right. beings, but that's that way in real life, yeah, too. Look, <laughs> not going to be, considering what we started with, think about what we haven't seen in three years. You know, there has been an incident where anyone's been hurt. There has been an incident where one of our own went off on a tear and, you know, caused a lot of property damage or human damage. It's we've been pretty good for the most part. Yes. So we have a lot of I, infighting, which slows us down. Of course. Of course. But um, you can't control that. People have a right to say what they want to say and right. do what they want to do. Yeah. You know. And the drama really hasn't hurt the community as much as it has bruised feelings between people. Right, that's but, true. But on the outside, again, sometimes the drama brings people in. So it's like, all right, fine. Well, regardless, I'm looking up something here on my phone. Um, the beat goes on, as Cher and Sonny once sang so famously a long time ago. The beat goes on with Flat Earth, regardless of uh, any sort of infighting and drama that goes on. Right. We're all still standing and we all still are on the Hashtag same team, even if you hate each other. And here's why. We all are looking for truth. So we're on the same team. Just like all of us in the world who are alive right now and who are you know, above a certain age, I don't, I don't pick a random age, 12, where we right. could be part of this and understand what's happening, are all born and living at this time of great awakening and consciousness expanding, which is totally cool. Uh, it doesn't mean everyone has to be involved. There are people that will never get involved, but we are doing things that may change their lives for the better. Yeah, I agree. Well put. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I'm going to go in the live chat in a minute and see what's happening. Well, Donald Trump made an announcement pretty recently, which really? is, do you know much about it? Starship Troopers. <laughs> yes. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Is it the Space Marines? No. No, wait. Space no, Army? It, oh, no, it, I, it's on the tip of my, it's Space Force. That just sounds like such a joke. In fact, him putting together something called Space Force to me could wake people up just the way the Tesla car in space could because right. it's so fake, It's it's got to be real. Or, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say, it's so fake, it's got to wake you up. I have watched so many science fiction movies where the military is in space. I mean, let's face it, a Star Trek is a military organization. I don't care what you say about the Federation. It's military. Uh, but the more recent, I shouldn't say, heck, Starship Troopers, 20 years old now. Look up Starship Troopers. You want to have fun, service, guarantee citizenship. Thumbs up there. And one of the other, Isn't my favorite. just like Israel? <laughs> or no, citizenship Why? requires service, I think. Maybe. Requires service. Yeah, it's sort of the same sort of thing. Uh, the other one which I love, which goes all the way back to 1986, was James, Ca James Cameron's sequel to Alien called Aliens, where they had the Space Marines. It was, you know, with Hudson and Hicks and Vasquez and all those guys that now do circuits at Comic-Con. And yeah, that's what he's talking about. And and sorry, also the uh, the long overdue and probably unnecessary sequel to uh, Independence Day, which they had a Space Force. Interesting. I'm looking in the live chat and uh, Charm Fear says, Space Force reminds me of Deadpool's X-Force, LMFAO. And uh, a couple other people are <laughs> making little funny Space Force jokes. I thought when I first saw it that it was a joke. You know, just like I thought when I saw this Tesla car in space. I didn't know this is, you know, for mainstream anyway, a real thing. I'm I'm reading this. I, I get that heavy metal reference, by the way, CV, CVH, where he says, can I be like in heavy metal Captain Stern? Oh. Stern. Hanging's too good for him. Burning's too good for him. Gosh, you know every movie, don't you? Lanny from Canada says, Operation Stop Public Space Travel. Hashtag Space Force. Right. Well, wait a minute. Could be the Space Navy space if they're travel. filming them in the water. That's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's it's interesting because I, I listened to Trump when he was talking about it, and it sounded kind of off the cuff, 
kind of, but you know full well that there are no accidents in politics. So or space or space. <laughs> So, yeah, so I don't know where he's going with this. and, and It's really, just who, another thing to yeah. put the fact that we can go to space into the public consciousness. Yeah. It's a form of kick the can. We're talking yeah. about doing this. this Nobody's is signing up for Space Force. Not to be confused with Space Command, by the way. Which, What's the difference? Uh, space Force is like a whole other branch of the military, where Space Command is actually based in Colorado. Because I, uh, I, I knew this because it was part of, I mean, there's so many things that are based in Colorado because it's the center of the country and it's the fallback position in case the coasts get wiped out. Uh, but I believe it's tied to NASA and the jurisdiction over satellites, military. Wow. So it does nothing too, right? <laughs> Not really. No, it doesn't. And they have a budget, which I'm sure is huge. It would be nice to have a budget for doing nothing, wouldn't it? Man, yeah, yeah. I could go to like Bali and chill out. I could really? go, I could no. go anywhere, you know. With yeah, I don't, I don't. Budget for doing, you don't strike me as a ball. You strike me as a, a European tour. Well, I'd go anywhere, you know, yeah. anywhere nice, and even somewhere horrible like the Salton Sea. But we'll get to that. Right. Um, but anyway, with Space Force, uh, Trump wants to establish it as a sixth military branch. So that's all we need. Yeah, right? it's never going to happen. No, never. Uh, I, it's, it's logistics alone. I, who, who, who signs up for something like that? You would, in fact, Space Force, if you made it a thing, nobody would enroll in anything else. With the exception of the Navy, and that's a whole other thing we can't really talk about. Hashtag all lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. the whole thing with Space Force is he wants to have American dominance in space. The whole thing about compared dominance. To, compared to who? I don't care for war or fighting. I see us as all being connected. And maybe that's Pollyanna-ish of me, but maybe that should be my middle name, Pollyanna. Because I just don't see the need for war. I don't think that's a way to solve anything ever. But anyway, so... Space Force. Yeah. Um, we've got troops fighting in Afghanistan. We've got troops fighting in the Middle East. We've got issues with where, China. Where, where are the troops going to do uh, in, in Space Force? Is it going to be James Bond, Moonraker type stuff where they're you know just flying around in space shoot, suits shooting each other? And who? what enemies? What enemies do we have? Well, in maybe space, in the space? impending alien invasion. Maybe they're going to oh, tie that right. in with that. Right. That and the bug planet. And yeah. I mean, our country's been at war forever. Or technically, the last 17, 18 years. But I mean, we're always Maybe. even undercover on the down low trying to fight somebody. And yeah. other countries do the same to us. But I think on a higher level, it's just a big, giant chessboard. And all the players are puppets like Trump and the rest. And they do what they're told to do. And they don't really ask questions. And maybe they don't even have the mind to ask questions or even to consider that there could be a darker side of the things that they're being told to do. Right. Or they're just evil as well. I have no idea. Hard to say. I think we should call it Space Farce. Space Farce. That's good. Yes. And we should open up a new thing called Flat Earth Force. What do you think? I like Flat, Flat Earth Force. Force. Not it's kind of a take a little bit of a variation of flat earth army, but yeah, sure. yeah. And in fact, we've got flat tastic who just said flat earth force. Great minds think alike. I like uh, military industrial complex. Um, I also like medical industrial complex as phrases because pretty much the same thing. What else is happening here? Mike Helmick in the live chat says lots of media coming out poking fun at NASA, a narrative flip, Trump bypassing NASA. It is already a military branch. Crazy stuff. Oh, yeah. By the way, we, we should probably mention the Bachelorette thing. Oh, I've never watched that show, or maybe I've seen it on in somebody else's house or something. I know what it's yeah, all about. It's, a, it's an awful, it's an awful, awful show. I don't think you know, that's reality. I just don't think people make decisions about their love life and about their, you know, forever after or forever until the divorce um, on a reality show. No. Uh, yeah. What could go wrong? Seriously, Everything. <laughs> up a bunch of hunky guys randomly picked by producers and then a woman who is looking for love in all the wrong places and then yeah. shoot it, shoot it, you know, record all this stuff and hope, oh, hope that the marriage goes well um, and that she chooses wisely. Yeah. What could go wrong? Nothing. Oh, well, anyway. So one of the guys. I can't imagine even let's just say there was a flat earth dating show and they yeah. picked, you know, whatever. 
X amount of women and or, or men, depending upon if it was the, the, the bachelor, let's say, let's say it's not the bachelorette. So right. you've got one flat earth guy and five flat earth women within the right age range. That wouldn't work either because we have to pick our own partners. Although there are cultures where matchmakers have worked throughout the years. Yeah. I can't imagine a matchmaker matching me up with a man if I were living in one of those cultures. You? It wouldn't work. Well, you would end up with murder, and I'd be murder. one holding the weapon. <laughs> I'm sorry, you mean another murder? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. like those bodies in the desert we spoke uh, of. Oh, wait, we didn't, did we? Ixnay <sighs> on the Aves Gray. Yeah, exactly. The, shallow um, Aves Gray. <laughs> shallow Aves Gray. <laughs> The uh, yeah yeah yeah. So anyway, he came out uh, as a as a flat earther and in Twitter. a bad way. If anybody saw it, in uh, a yeah, way. it could have been, could have been worse. But uh, but a lot of the Twitter way he people, described how the flat Earth works. It's hard yeah, to yeah, people of course. To, he didn't he didn't throw out the best stuff. And it, you know it's hard for any of us unless you're one of those people who's very good um, at going out in the street and doing street activism and explaining things to people. If you don't, or if you don't have a diagram and you're not that good. Uh, it's hard to explain it to somebody. So, so now, if you believe in everything scripted, did he come out because the producers told him to come out because they didn't kick him off? Yes. And will they merge that into an episode where she's going, hey, I've got to ask you. No, I doubt that'll happen. Mm -hmm. I think that TV shows and movies and songs and you name it, even sets of movies and TV shows have been seeded with flat earth material for years. Easter eggs, if you will. Hmm. And I'm not sure, but I believe that it's in some way being rolled out. And I know we're a part of that, although we're not <laughs> part of that rolling out undercover, but they put this stuff out there and got us interested in it. And some of us are pushing the truth now right. because we saw it in all of these different media outlets. and you know, read about it in old books and et cetera, however you came to Flat Earth. But I think they want it out. I'm not quite sure why. That I don't know. What do you, what do you think about it? Otherwise, I, they shut down all Flat Earth videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, you, you and, and I they have, can. They can put in they could shut an algorithm on uh, YouTube. and Or Google and, yeah. and shut it down. Heck, we got a stat squish already. So Explain the stat squish for those. Oh, people. stat squish. Uh, so when, what, a week ago you typed in Flat Earth. Remember when I said we finally caught up and passed Donald Trump at 20.9 mm -hmm. million? Several days later, and I saw it coming. I could see it fluctuate. All of a sudden it went from 20 to 13. Almost instantly and, you know, overnight, really. And that is because they're, it's their electronic version of curbing our enthusiasm, which is, and I saw them do it before when I was up in Canada about, what, 15, 16 months ago, where they, they chopped a whole bunch out in terms of the numbers. Now, nobody's videos were deleted. They're just reducing the numbers of trending, uh, the, you know, the trending spike and whatever. They can do that, and and I don't think it was a coincidence that it happened shortly after I was making note that we just we caught and passed the president of the United States, and now the president took a spike and we took a, a dive, and it's like why how how would that even happen? So that's a stat squish. Nothing was erased. Everybody's videos are still there, of course, but the numbers are lower artificially. Which is fine. Hmm. Remember, we we saw I, we, it was only a matter of time. I mean, they left in the upload date filter for eighteen months, and because Bob told me about it, Bob, Bob from Globusters, and then finally they caught it and they said, "Okay, we're we're gonna push this thing down." Well, now we're still it's still nothing to sneeze at, but at the same time, it's like okay, they're reacting to us again, and that that is flattering and humbling in itself because all right. of the conspiracies they could give a crap about. This, they have to react to us on a regular basis. Well, just like uh, Jaron revealed that uh, um, NASA is reacting to, to him and the things that he put out right. as early as when he used to do those ISS uh, viewing parties on sure. his channel. Oh, well, Rob Skiba, when they when Rob would go into the NASA database and pull it into Photoshop. And at first you could say, well, coincidence, maybe. Nah. There's been enough of those things that, uh, yeah. They are reacting to us, and right. we do. It's weird how much power we have as flat earthers. Yeah, we well, can make the puppets jump on the strings. Yeah, the community is so big, and social media is 
it is the thing now. I mean, it is permeated every aspect of our lives to, and it's in real time. So wait, what? I just need to check my Twitter and my Instagram as well. Oh, really? Uh, I've got I a messenger. Was, I, Facebook I'm going to update my Tumblr yeah, and my, and... not my Facebook and a whole <laughs> bunch of YouTube. Yeah, I know. Right. It's in fact, there is, there's been a bunch of videos out there recently trying. It's not going to do any good people. It, they're too wired in. I mean, the kids are getting in so early that small children that look like they're five, six years old have cell phones. I've seen it. It is the, absolutely. And it is the only thing I will say about being the age that I am is that I got to miss the bulk of it. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things about being the age we are that, it, uh, that are good. Um, one of that is that our childhood was unencumbered by technology, right. which allowed us more time to go out and play. Oh, you know? yeah. We had the TV, of course. And yeah, so but three television watching. stations, and they shut off at night. Exactly. <laughs> and also the whole transgender thing, um, where young people who feel that they're different are, um, which has always happened, but are now more encouraged Right. I don't think they were ever encouraged because they didn't have the technology when I was young to take hormones and do these sorts of things that in the past, I think parents would say either, no, we won't allow you to wear a dress, Billy, or they'll allow Billy to wear a dress. But the whole changing your physical structure, that wasn't happening back in oh, the 60s yeah. and 70s, as far you as will, I know. You will children. never catch me saying the the cliche which is you kids have it way better than we ever did yes. i will never say that sorry we had it way better than you guys Hands and on the surface down. we did have on the very superficial level we did have some pretty cool stuff like some really cool tv shows and maybe there's cool tv shows now i don't know and some music that i think is really cool and I, that extends into if you grew up and you were a child in the 80s and and even into the 90s, as opposed to what happens now. What happens now, I can't tell. And, you know, maybe it's because I'm, quote, old in the eyes of young people. I don't know who, what is that? Is that Ariana Grande? Or is that, you know, they right. all sound the same to me. Right. And it sounds like noise. And when I hear it, I want to get away from wherever that noise is coming from. Yeah. And that's yeah. unfair, because I'm sure these women, these singers, and these men have great voices. And I just don't get it, because it's not made for me. But, oh, I'm so glad it's not made for me. Yeah. If if anyone wants to feel nostalgic and sentimental about stuff, look up, and I'm sure it's on on YouTube right now, uh, VH1 series. <laughs> In fact, VH1. Uh, Remember when VH1 was cutting edge? <laughs> yeah, it was cutting edge. <laughs> MTV for, for people over 25. Yeah. I, oh, I loved MTV so much. I wanted to be a VJ so bad. Oh, MTV was was fantastic. Uh, would it, yeah, and, of course, they had, they had a rocket imagery in the very beginning they did in the very beginning and then they changed to the space shuttle version for yeah. the mid 80s and then the space shuttle disaster happened and they never did any more space after that mtv was space free kind of anyway the point is is that the show on vh1 was called i love the 80s mm -hmm. a multi-part series done very very well and it never skipped a beat uh in fact they people loved it so much they even came out with an encore series called uh i love the 80s strikes back it was just kind of cheesy, but it covered anything else that they missed. It was great. So there you go. I'm going into the live chat, which I probably think is filled with people talking about those sorts of things. Charm Fear is saying Nirvana. And uh, yeah, Star, Star Charmin is saying the fake space shuttle disaster, indeed. You know, another great thing would be, and I said this before, and obviously I'm not doing it, but, you know, we've got D-Marble going to check out the 24-hour sun thing right. um in a, a, a he's flying there right now but somebody would actually go look at the challenger astronauts and we've all seen the meme where they're all still alive yeah with the names and get together some money and go find those people and interview them yeah find out if they really are those people i right. mean you know we say we say they're those people right but that there's a difference between saying that they're those people and standing next to them in an interview filmed and then put on YouTube channels. That's, where we that's a little really, tricky, though. Well, they'll have to lie right to our faces, and we could probably tell. Because remember, or, two of them, I believe, claim to be the twin brothers yeah. of their brothers. So it's like, what are the odds with all the twins? What are the odds with all the NASA twins? Yeah, I know. I don't think I've ever actually met a twin in my life, and I've lived really all over. No. 
Oh, I there was one in my. Oh wait, that's not class. true. Wait, no. My cousin is a twin. Maybe fraternal twins, and I couldn't really even tell. Uh, my on my oh boy, my mother's side. Uh, yeah, Tana and Christy, they are twin girls, and identical twins. They were in my family, and their mother was part of twins. Oh, well, okay, so it is common. I'm not saying it's the rare. No, no, I'm not saying it's rare, common, but it is but out there. With astronauts who actually left Earth, supposedly. Oh, right. Not just oh, astronauts yeah, yeah. What are the who are in there? NASA training. Yeah, out of the 500. Amount who actually supposedly left Earth. That, yeah, out of the 500 people that were chosen to supposedly go up into space, there was at least three sets of twins. That seems a little much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know. Some weird things happen. And two on the same mission. That's oh, even weirder. That Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Very weird. <laughs> um, somebody's Flattastic is mentioning pop-up video. Oh, I love pop-up video where they play a video and then they have these little pop-up thought bubbles. Factoids. Like, yeah, yeah, factoids about varying things. And it was yeah. so interesting. You know, we have the internet and can look a lot a lot of stuff up now, but at the time, yeah. pop-up video was Oh, yeah, there was like no. That. Yeah, pop-up video was the only way to find out stuff about videos the world of the unreal says transgender is nothing new at all techniques have just gotten better yeah that is indeed true but giving children hormones at a very young age and allowing them to pick their gender and oh my gosh all of this stuff i don't know i don't believe that that was happening way back in the day hmm. i mean i i don't and I, I'm, I'm i'm hesitating in what i'm saying i don't think that in my high school there was anybody that was out and gay nobody that i knew of that was gay mm. and i know we're not talking about transgender and gay are the same thing i'm just saying different ways of life no you're you're absolutely right 10 percent if 10 percent of the population is gay or homosexual or whatever you want to call it five percent are in five percent are out and in, yeah in my graduating class that means like, you had a graduating class of uh 200 people 20 mm -hmm. of them would be gay right and mine yeah. was 100 and something there was at least 10 gay people and no, no, you couldn't. You couldn't come out in the eighties. Did you come out? Was there anybody in your class that you thought might be gay? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of I course. I think one guy. One guy. Of course, but there's a lot. But at least half of them, we had no idea until many. And no one years. really cared. No, that was the other thing. Well, it's not that we didn't care. We were ignorant about yeah, it. Yeah, that's we, true we, too. We like, the thing that Rob Zombie said, where he <laughs> said he goes, "How in the world did the band Queen fly under everybody's <laughs> radar?" Right? Yeah. Everybody had those the, the Queen albums, and like Freddie Mercury was as gay as Christmas. Right, so, and the band's named Queen. Wake yeah, up, everyone! Band, <laughs> it was Queen, and he died of AIDS. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, uh, I, so did, like, I never thought about him being gay or not. I don't think like that. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Yeah, you know, right. relax, don't oh, do relax. it. What is that song about? Right? With the sound effect in the song, too. Yeah, yeah. That's not of really a good sound. Water but... fountain. <laughs> well, of a water fountain. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Funny. Of, of Peter North. Mm. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, I probably shouldn't say that. Yeah. No, the uh, no, and but, uh, I laugh because I actually know who that is. Uh, there you go. Not not personally though. Uh, oh, what else is it good? Is. Um, Charm Fear says at university, 50% of the lecturers struggle visibly to be politically correct about homosexuality and transgenderism, and it makes things super awkward. Well, yeah. I, it's, it's a hard it's a hard line yeah. to walk. I'm glad I'm not in that position to um, have to speak to many people. Well, I guess we do that as flat earthers, and not you know, uh, offend anyone. And you know what, I guess that's how I am anyway. I don't want to offend any anyone. I want people who are gay or trans or whatever to become flat earthers because they're people and have a right to know the truth. Right. So here well, here, here's a perfect example. Um, the homecoming king of my graduating class was gay, but nobody knew it. it he, he, he was, you know, one of those guys that kept it really, really low key. And only later it's like oh right he didn't date <laughs> the entire high school his high school career he never he never dated and so you know he was never seen with a girlfriend no it's like oh right now you know so subtle things we we pick up on later so again half the popular half of them are still in the closet for a good reason they don't want to part of them don't want to be ostracized the other part wants to, to live a normal life you know they want I, the best of both worlds i feel I feel bad because there are some people that, you know, are very 
they use the word tranny. They're uh, very um, anti. But they, I think that they need to understand that most of the people who have decided to do that, yeah. um, they're, I shouldn't say that they're, there's, I'm not saying they were pressured into it, but there's pressures on young people now that I can't even imagine. And I don't know what causes people to choose these things. I'm not talking about gay. I'm talking about somebody who changes their body and gets oh, an operation yeah. and yeah. all of that stuff. I, I've i never felt anything other than female and never felt anything other than attracted to men. I never even, I'm one of those women who didn't even experiment with other women because it wasn't trendy when I was in high school or the college ages. Although some people had, were born let, in the 80s come on, and 90s. No, had you been, let, let's yes. be honest here, had well, you gone to university, you would have been approached. In the 80s and it. 90s, I think it became more acceptable. Yeah. And it was more hidden when we were growing up. Like, look at, um, as Quaylu Charlie, who's in our live chat, says, Mr. Brady on the Brady Bunch, he was actually, as an actor, gay. Absolutely, um, he was gay. And then we've got uh, Three's Company, which was a 70s show as well, yep. um, where we had Ritter. John Ritter playing a gay guy. And uh, Darren on Bewitched, I think. Uh, Dick Sargent, or is that Dick York? I think they were I both remember. gay. I think they were both gay. I think they were both gay. And these are um, people that were... Uh, on the down low, <laughs> undercover. I, well, let me let me boil it down. But part to, of a childhood that I experienced as well as you. Right. So. Right. I mean, yeah, we don't. We didn't have the pressures that, or the we, or the the amount of media input, the different points of view that everybody had. It, everything. Mm -hmm. It was way more cut and dry. There weren't as many colors in the rainbow. Sorry to steal that from the gay community, mm -hmm. but but it's true. There weren't that as many colors out there, so it's like okay, and so people kind of had to figure it out on their own. Usually, it was were the same. I'll steal it from um, Family Guy. There's a time and a place for everything, and that place is college. Because that's where almost every story I ever heard is like you know what happens behind dorm room doors. You know, usually well, comes out later. I remember in the 90s going out with friends and noticing there were girls holding hands openly and thought, wait a minute, when did this become a thing? Now, I always know that there are women who are lesbians and hold hands and are in love and all that. Right. But it just seemed very much open. And also, it seemed as if these women were in the experimental stage as yep. opposed to having a lifelong commitment to that. And they were getting oh, yeah. a lot of attention from men and enjoying that right. so it was um more like a um fake lesbian for attention I, again these if I, particular girls i'm talking about i dated yeah. quite a bit as you know going from high school till now and if i have to hear one more time quote unquote i experimented in college <laughs> think i'm gonna black out because i just heard it I'm, in fact it was more of the norm than the exception it's, uh, My it's, college but, but only with women were spent working at a radio station where I was the only woman pretty much yeah. and it just wasn't um it wasn't anything even crossed my mind and I think women are gorgeous for sure uh -huh. but you know I like I like the vibe between me and men and I spent most of my college career manufacturing explosives <laughs> exactly hmm. we all have our we all have our uh, we all have our things. Mm. Um, Charm Fear again with a great comment says homosexuality I can understand because of the processes and oxytocin etc involved and probably she means in utero. Transgenders yeah. she says in her opinion are typically people confused that their gender binary anatomically defines their identity. And I do understand that even if you have those surgeries you're never going to be a woman or never going to be a man when it right. would come to any sort of testing that would be done. But um, I guess people have the right to do what they want with their own bodies. That's all I say. And I will again say that if at some time Flat Earth gets big enough that we have people who are transgender or whatever that are interested in Flat Earth, welcome, because we're all people. And these this group of people on Flat Earth who just want to hate everybody and put people down, it's not going to help because the world is a place with all sorts of people and you cannot control their actions. If you don't condone them, don't hang out with them, but you right. can't control them. Agreed. Absolutely agree. And Bill How Keith did we get off on this? <laughs> I don't know. Bill Keith says a pregnant woman loading up on soy and estrogen mimickers can have their son develop a female brain. 
Hmm. I don't know about that. Again, scientific studies have been working on the big question for a long time, which is why do some kids come, you know, are they hard, hardwired to a certain gender? And, you know, they're, they've been trying to figure it out chemically forever. Well, I was hardwired to be a natural born female who is attracted to men. I never had to think, what sex do I like? And I think a lot of gay people too, same thing. So I was like, what sex do I like? Oh, same sex as me. I I think, I I don't think, yeah, yeah. In your case, I'm sure you were absolutely hardwired. Whereas me, I think it would, a lot of it would have come down to nurture, meaning I grew up on a, on a very rural sheltered place, you know, up up in the Island. Had I grown up in, I don't know, dreary, dreary old Manhattan, you know, and, and joined a theater department, you know, Maybe it is like that. Who knows? Too. For some people, right. they grow up somewhere and are exposed to certain people and situations. So, yeah, yeah maybe they're bent. You know, the and whole maybe tra- it's all the, of it. The, the trading places argument, which is if you take somebody out of their environment and put them in a different one, will that environment mold them? I think sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Well, the thing is, is that I like cats. Okay, a lot of people know that about me, right. but. That's because I have cats and no cats and love cats. At a certain time in my life, my mother was scared of cats. I grew up with dogs, St. Bernard dog to be exact. Right. So I always thought I would have dogs later because cats were scary until I got exposed to a cat. So maybe it's something like that for some people too. It's what you're exposed to. It's what yeah. you end up with. Yep, agreed. Mm. Yeah. All right. We'll close the door on that topic. Okay. I'm sure there'll be a number of people totally mad. Well, no, no. Look, we talk about just about anything. So, yeah, yeah indeed. Um, Bob of Globuster sums up the conversation like this: "I like big butts, and I cannot lie." Okay, and he adds, I "Okay, I lied." <laughs> it's always nice to have a little levity, just even it out over here. Itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was a great little '90s thing. Uh, so things coming up in, in the flat earth, uh, this fairly soon, uh, Aaron mentioned yesterday, he is planning on a jamboree yes. in Los Angeles yes. and that should be a lot of fun where he's going to do an experiment and invite media and turn it in kind of like an event. I think he saw the potential when we did the park thing down in Arcadia uh, because, you know, we had two media groups there just at Arcadia and then the, the other media people that were at the Salton Sea. But it was really positive and really fun. And the turnout was was nice, considering it was Arcadia on a Friday afternoon. It was Friday, right? Yeah, it was Friday. And it, it was a blast. So Los Angeles and Southern California is turning out to be, not surprising, uh, a pretty cool hotspot for Flat Earth, which I'm, well, I'm looking forward to. And the Jamboree is coming up, September, coming up in September, and you and I are going. Right. before and That's the month after the Edmonton Conference in Edmonton, Canada. And if you guys haven't looked that up, look go to fe2018.com slash Canada. And it's going to be at the Fantasyland Hotel. Which Just the is- name, Fantasyland Hotel. This reminds me, name-wise, of a hotel where you would have a hot tub slash jacuzzi in the room with you, but not just in the room with you, in the bathroom, but right, right next to the bed. Right. Hey, well, you've seen the pictures. Have you seen the pictures of the hotel? No. Oh, you know, Does it's, it have it's that? what they said. Well, yeah, it, some of these rooms. Heart shaped bathtubs or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's They're themed rooms. Oh, There's well, really? Theme, Western and super romance. Do we get to pick what kind of room we have? I we don't know. Oh, well, I guess that would be cool. Well, I'd have to, I mean, I think it's totally cheesy and tacky, to be honest. But if that's where it is, I'll pick a theme room. Sure. Or what theme I'd pick. You but. should look at the, I, I, like, they didn't ask when I made the reservations, but there's a lot of themed rooms there. I think, I think only the themed rooms are the ones that come with hot tubs, because they tried to get me into one with a hot tub. Right. I was like, eh, don't know if I really need it. If you had to pick a themed hotel room, you had to, what theme would you pick? Oh, some sort of future. Oh yeah, that makes futuristic sense. one, you know, with a lot of or like and- if you watched uh, Star Trek the original series, sometimes it would show the the their quarters, their private area, their bedrooms right. basically. And Spock had a really cool room. I'd pick Spock's room in Star Trek the original series. That yeah. is an interesting choice. Spock was my first crush. I don't know what that says about you, to be honest. Well, he seemed. 
he was half human, half Vulcan. Right. And he seemed very, you know, he obviously was you know, the character, of course, it's fake, whatever. But right. the character was very intelligent and different than everybody else. And he had a very unique look about him. And he was thin and looked to be tall. And also, he had a tender side that was part of the human side of him. Right. And I really thought that he would be a cool boyfriend, although I've never met a Spock yet. Still looking. <laughs> Hashtag looking for Spock. <laughs> All right. You keep chasing that dream. Yeah. Mm, well, that's nice. Here I am, 55. <laughs> you know, uh, like, where's my Spock? <laughs> the, that's a t shirt right there. Where's my Spock? Right. Honestly. I don't think very many women had crushes on Leonard Nimoy as Spock back in. No, no it was mostly Shatner. Right. And Can you do a good Shatner impression? <laughs> no, I'm not going to do a shat. <laughs> no, there are people that do a fantastic yeah. Shatner uh, impressions. I do not do a good one. Yeah. Every everybody I think can do a little bit because it's it's overacting. That's all it is. It's just adding drama to normal little things. I'm thinking in my mind of a Spock impression that I could do, but if I actually did it out loud, you'd look at me like that's the worst William Shatner worst Spock impression. Spock or not Spock, excuse me, worst William Shatner impression ever. But he spoke like this, you know. <laughs> Spock, what are we talking about right now? I love that show. I like Bones, Dr. McCoy. Because so, he was my least favorite character, but I liked him because he could cure you simply by waving what looked like a cigarette lighter over your body when you were in sick bed. Right. Then that anything, little your noise. Your arm comes yeah. off. Arm comes off. Ended with that little Luckily, cigarette lighter. <laughs> most of the stuff they dealt with was internal injuries for production reasons. Of course, because they didn't have the uh, the, yeah, they're not the gonna be money taken. or budget or technology to come up with, you know. Or they'd have to hire amputees as, mm -hmm. as actors. I thought it was funny that most of the women went for Kirk. Most of the alien women on the other planets went for Kirk. It's because he was hot blooded. Why didn't they go for Scotty? Check it and see. <laughs> What about Scotty? Yeah, I think he had a fever of 103. I don't think anyway, Scotty got any chicks. No, Scotty didn't get any chicks. What was Bones the line he'd always chicks. say? Captain, we can't hold it anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess don't you have the power. I don't think sleeping with a man who says that would be that sexy, though. <laughs> so maybe that's why he didn't get any chicks. Nah, he was. No, which is why they, they kept uh, the, the Shatner character in Next Gen as Riker. Riker mm. got all the chicks. He was like a throwback, you know. And you know, of course, Picard got chicks. Anyway, let's not get off on on that. Too Boy, much. we've talked about some weird stuff. Today. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We we tend to we tend to do that. I've heard people say that this show. Well, we never talk about flat Earth. We do talk about flat Earth, but uh, look, it's not going to be the the serious, you know, dark and brooding because flat Earth isn't a dark and brooding thing. It never it never has been. You know, don't forget, we have what 250, 260 tracks out there songs. In fact, National Geographic wanted to use, hopefully they got a hold of each other, uh, they wanted to use one of the Flat Earth Guys songs. Remember? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember which one, because they all kind of blend together, that country western thing that he does. But, because, you know, because he won a flatty last year. Mm-hmm. And so National Geographic wanted to use it. So how much of it would they use? Would they have it playing in the background? You know, when they're showing meetup montages? I don't know. But, oh, yeah, we should also talk about the, do you want to talk well, about Well, that's the, the Flat Earth Man. Yeah, the Flat Earth Man. Yeah. Yes. That's who they wanted to, I, I finally got the contact info and put him in touch. I with like him. the fact that Alex speaks totally different than when he sings, when he portrays the Flat Earth Man. Well, he's British. Yeah, but it's such talent to be able to do that. Well, I know actresses can do it. it. Is, Certain actresses and actors can switch the way they sing or way they speak and do different it, dialects and accents. But I think it's definitely, you know. It, it's it, It's been a trend over the last 15 years for uh, people, especially actors in Australia and England, because it's much easier for them to do it because, you know, the language is pretty similar. And they are told like, look, if you can develop a solid American, you know, straight up, no, you know, like a newscaster accent uh, or any American accent, you will get a lot more opportunities in the United States. And it's worked. You know, some of our biggest stars out there right now are not from here. They are I British. Do. They are Australian. They right, are Canadian. But you, 
I worked for a radio station in the 80s in Napa, California, and the most popular DJ was a guy, um, he was from Wales. He called himself the Wild Welshman, Gareth J. Nicholas. I've tried to find him uh, somewhere, you know, looking him up on social media. I can't find him anymore. But uh, yeah, that guy, he was popular because he had that Welsh accent. And mm -hmm. a lot of women were like totally in love with him because he had a Welsh accent and he was, you know, broadcasting on a station in Northern California. So having a... Um, neutral American accent like I do is a good thing, but also being the only one having an accent of a different sort is also a, a good quality if you want to make money in media. Well, it's also easier for the media to blend in with you because then the correspondent, there's no, it's, it's a straight up conversation. It's like, okay, uh, neutral, neutral accent, Southern accent, neutral accent, Chicago, neutral, New York. Uh, it's weird, you know. The, it's like well, all Chicago the Chicago has a neutral accent, but it also has a Chicago. I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a little, it's a little more nasally. It's not mm -hmm. Boston. It's not New York. It's not the South. It's not West Virginia. Uh, it, it's like all the accents sort of just dissolved away once they got to about Kansas, mm. and that was it. With the exception of Texas, Texas There's is a Michigan accent too, which sounds like the classic, in a way, Minnesota accent. Right. Oh, I Minnesota. Don't, don't yeah. you know? Up there. Slightly the, like that. I don't have that. Near but the my Iron Range. And, uh, who never moved away has yeah. it a little bit. Isn't yeah. it interesting? You know, the Tower of Babel changing all the, the dialects, if you want to believe that. And yeah. then, of course, we have all the different accents. And I guess that would be dependent upon what countries that we came from originally. Like there's a Cajun and Acadian that's in Louisiana, and the Louisiana right. accent has a French influence in it, and other countries influence as well, Spanish architecture and influence. So yeah. there is a there's quite the accent and many different varieties in Louisiana. Right. Or heck, some of the accents, if you went back in time and, and looked at it, probably came from just certain individuals that drawled certain letters and they raised their children and they drawled their letters and wow that's an interesting theory one man can make a one whole man accent. can make an accent absolutely i think they can if they had a big enough family they could pull it off i never heard about that i never excuse me i never thought about that sure why not hey you know you're you're in the back you move off to somewhere and you start pronouncing things a certain way if your family and community keeps going that way that whole community is going to sound like that Actually, some people mispronounce things and everybody in their workplace or in their home mispronounce things that same way. Oh, I've sure. Seen that happen. Sure. Doing, doing Strange World, I have been, even though I, I consider myself a, a fairly good speaker over the years, that's what I've, been, I've done professionally. I, I was corrected on, I don't know, three or four things. Yeah, we I, all misspeak or say <laughs> words wrong. Or um, there's somebody in our live chat, and I get his name wrong. It's Latin, I think, but recipes and them. Oh, I got that wrong too. But I mean, there's things I don't know how to say, and I'll just you know kind of wing it. So um, it. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, oh, Bill Keith says I say aunt instead of aunt for my mother's sister, and that's I always a little, say that's a aunt. Different. Because an aunt is a person and an aunt is an animal, but both are correct. Depends where right. you're from. Yeah, and yeah. Don't get started on the whole British versus United States way well, of saying. Look things. at look at the island. Look at the island that is the UK, and right. how many different accents, regional accents, sure. that are in Scotland alone, right? For example, or or Ireland, or anywhere really. So yeah. Let me go into the live chat, and we've got Martin Leakey here. Oh, he says, Wales is magical. I'll come to Wales, flat fest. I'd love to go to Wales. I haven't been to Ireland and to Wales, and I definitely want to go. So we and filmed Torchwood, all the episodes. I want to uh, go there, and I'm going to tell myself now, not I wish I'd go there or hope to go there. I'm just going to say I am going to go there. Put the intent out there. I also will go to Japan, somewhere I have thought I wanted to go for a long time. Is there somewhere that you, Mark, want to go? Or you can uh, say, I will go too, for the, put the intent out. Uh, no, not, I mean, I, the, the Egypt Middle East thing was cool, but the only other place I really wanted to go was Santorini, you know, part of the whole Greek islands thing. Oh, wow. you know, I love the white cliffs. And that was mostly because of the movie Summer Lovers with Daryl Hannah because I saw it when I was uh, growing up. It was an early 80s movie, and mm. it was just it was just 
hypnotic to me. The visuals were so amazing, just white and blue and uh, just gorgeous. Did you have a crush on Daryl Hannah? No. No, I didn't. No, it was weird. I could have cared less about the movie plot. It's like they didn't show anything anyway. You know, it's like, oh, a threesome. But the... Um, uh, there was a lot of those titillating sorts of movies in the 80s about... Yeah, let's pan sort of off. To, uh, <laughs> you know, I couldn't even prove in a court of law if anything happened there. Right. But, but the settings were so beautiful. It was just... Mm. It was, I was just just entranced by the Oh, maybe thing. it was on a stage set, sadly enough. No, 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 no. They shot it all there. Absolutely, it was all there. <gasps> Yeah, so and that sh that could should have been a fun shoot. Uh, if you haven't watched it, maybe I'll send it to you. It's a uh, it's a fun fun interesting very eighties movie. Like the movie Splash, Nathan Oakley points out. Did a little different than Splash. That yeah, Splash. she could this, walk. This, this, this was more European, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, and yeah, but was definitely one of her early early movies. And mm. producers took note. It's like, what can we do with her? Oops. Sorry. Daniel Reza saying Southern California, the accent sounds different than Northern California. It depends where you live. I lived in both Southern and Northern over a period of time in the late eighties and into the early nineties. Um, Chris Topher is speaking a little bit about Hawaii. Yeah. You know, I never went to Hawaii. Um, how are things going in Hawaii? Anybody have any idea what's happening with the volcanoes? Yeah, and all that? I mean, it's, it's slow again uh, volcano lava is like the mummy super dangerous but really slow so you know as long as you watch your step you're fine you know how many shots do we have to see of people playing even the media is like eh, whatever you know we'll come back in a month and and see what's going on now, yeah i mean it's destroying homes and it's doing this but until it does something like krakatoa or vesuvius What's really happened? It's just this slow gurgling. It might as well just be mud. You know, blurp, blurp, blurp. But there's lava there, big time. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it as in highway style lava. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's flowing towards the ocean and it's wiping out some neighborhoods. But it's not, again, it's slow. That With all your other disasters, it becomes overwhelming. You know, like a firestorm, you know, in California or a windstorm somewhere or a tornado or a tsunami. It's stuff that's like, get out of the way. You know, hands in the air screaming 50s style panic type stuff <laughs> markovsky says time for a round of golf before the lava gets here <laughs> yeah exactly exactly with, with lava especially in hawaii of all places if it was if it, like mount st helens that was a big deal it happened very very quickly there were these massive flows but in hawaii it's like they've always had some sort of volcanic activity mm -hmm. and everybody knows plus it's hawaii so people are like yeah <sighs> should we like move or something you know, like they're checking their watches like i don't know what do you think a sandwich come back yeah let's do that so again the media is not even it's like they've shot enough footage they're gonna come back they'll they'll leave and they, i think maybe well, just re rely on local affiliates does the lava create richer soil and more land i've heard over time right sure but until then i mean remember uh and which is why everyone says oh well you know well, it's creating more real estate technically that's true but it's it's volcanic rock <laughs> right. so it's jagged it's black i mean it's black 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 and there's no dirt on top of it so what are you gonna do for homes i mean you'd have to have like above ground plumbing you know water lines and and everything it, there's just nothing you can do with it for years it, it's unusable from a practical standpoint for a long time you're not gonna see any hotels going on top of it uh, Flattastic says, how about a conference in Hawaii? <laughs> it's getting cheaper to go there lately, I heard. <laughs> well, I mean, a few Hotel are, rooms, two for a dollar. <laughs> yeah, people are getting turned off uh, by certain things. It's like, why go if if there might be a chance, you you know, the wind will shift, and you'll get smoke. and. I would ash. go to Hawaii tomorrow. Well, Wouldn't sure. you? Let's just say someone said, come to Hawaii. Wait a yeah, minute, I didn't go. somebody invite us they to Hawaii? They did invite us to Hawaii, yeah. And we, said we could stay for free? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Well, why aren't we doing that? I don't know. We should go. Yeah, indeed. Uh, <laughs> go watch the lava and, exactly. and, and have sandwiches next to it. Um, this is interesting. Someone named Zoro in our live chat says there's new flat earth pizza parlor in Kaluai, K-A-I-L-U-A. -I, -I, I know I said it wrong, but anyway, it's on Oahu and it's called the Lovin' Oven. And Zoro says they have a flat earth map on the wall. And he says that the owner says they're a flat earth think tank. Wow. 
Very interesting. Cool. That's neat. See what else is Charm Fierce's revelations is happening. But I remember all through my childhood all the crazy things that happened on Earth and the you know things, firestorms and volcanoes and earthquakes and right. um, you know there's always been bad stuff happening, hurricanes and you know yeah. maybe revelations is like a thing that's just been happening for decades. I think it's revelation. Or, oh, yeah, that's true. Just, um, I know a lot right. of people say You're right. right, and I say revelations, and I know it's revelation. Yeah. You're right. I read that somewhere and said, yeah. I yeah. correct yeah. my speech. No, so, no, I called it that for the long, for years. You, years remember years. you were saying sometimes you say things wrong? And then oh, yeah, like et, et cetera, which is et cetera. Oh, I hate that. Um, but thanks for correcting me. Revelation. Pic, I don't picture. like. Uh, I can't say picture anymore. because no, You don't say picture very well. You thanks. say picture. Picture. Like a picture of beans. So now I just say images. <laughs> And there's another word you don't like. Yeah, and you say another word. Nuclear. I don't like saying it now because I'm because again, because I'm American. And remember, the short version of nuclear is nuke. And how do you spell nuke? N U K E. Well then okay, well, how do you spell the long version? N U K U L A R. Nuclear. And yeah, that's not how you spell it. It's N U clear. Mm. So I say atomic basically that's, <laughs> exactly. my, that's my go-to got your atomic substitute testing. words all set up i do i'm gonna substitute words images Why picture not? picture <laughs> who says pictures well picture. i have a little problem with the word m-i-r-r-o-r i say when mirror? i'm just quickly speaking mirror How i am saying that? mirror but it sounds to some people no, but nobody says nobody says mirror like mirror. I'm saying I was mirror. looking in my mirror the other day. <laughs> nobody says mirror any anymore. They all say mirror, uh, but they don't say mirror mirror on the wall. They say magic mirror, and that's. And the I, I think I can get away with picture <laughs> because it's a it's a soft C. Maybe kind of no. Images. What fine images composites? <laughs> but yeah, that sounds good. Uh, hello to Amber Punk and Earth Ponds and Baptized by Jesus. And hello, Arwen, who says mirror. <laughs> Chris Tover, too. And uh, I already mentioned Charm Fear. Hello, Plainview Comedy. And Nora, No One's Flower. Nora's been all over the place. She says she's all traveled out. She just went to England. And she says, I couldn't even handle Hawaii right now. Uh, Mr. Maddie Moses. Good question from Mr. Matty Moses, who says, whatever happened to acid rain? Does anybody ever talk about swine flu anymore? Acid rain, any of these things? No, just the fear porn of the day. What about Zika virus? Anyone talking about Zika virus? What about herpes? I mean, I know people occasionally get herpes, but I remember, I think in the 80s, it was on the cover of Times Magazine, or Time Magazine, excuse me, and herpes is not that thing that they said it was. Even AIDS. I uh, come back and the first okay. word I hear is herpes. That's a great sign, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Outstanding. We're all, we're all over the place. How did you? I was gone 45 seconds and all of a sudden. Yeah, it's I just, just bring really, it right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the thing about this show is it is casual chat. We jump all over the place with different subjects. It's not like the other shows on this channel, which are interviews and very flat earth oriented. This is just... This is just us talking as if we were talking in real life in the same place. Because literally, those conversations are like these conversations, but without microphones. Right. It's 99% accurate. <laughs> exactly. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, what else have we got going on? Chocolate Sayayan is here. And hello, Ace McLeod and Racer FE and Icy... Blue Edge. I see Blue Edge. Oh, that's interesting. Hello to Jesse James and Karen B and DITRH and Bob of Globusters. And uh, I mentioned Mark Ofsky and Zorro earlier and Nathan Oakley, 1980. And Ginger Sugarbush, 905. I mentioned Martin Lee Key already. I'm just going through the chat and just want everybody to know that I appreciate you. Lady Onyx, I mentioned Quaylu Charlie. Hey, Steve Watson. And um, what else? Uh, I mentioned Bill Keith as well earlier too. Um, hmm. Did I say Daniel Reza? No idea. Frequencies Illuminated, hello there. Whenever I see interesting comments, oftentimes they're by Frequencies Illuminated. Um, Five Arts Liberalis, hello. Five Arts Liberalis is a cool man. 
he makes some of the thumbnails I've used, and I always credit him in the description box. They're very artistic and very cool looking. Um, uh, CVH we mentioned earlier, and Chris Law, and Glenn Parent, and Awaken Mind, and everyone else. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. What else can we talk about? I'm kind of fresh out of material. Are you? Yeah. Uh, That's it. Show's done. Well, <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> the, um, no, we should talk about, at the very least, where we're going to be together tonight. Oh, yes. We're going to be on TFR on uh, Rob Skiba's program. Right. And that's at um, 9 Pacific, 12, 12 Eastern. Eastern time. Exactly. Yeah. So it's going to be a little late for some folks. Uh, but check it out. And yeah. maybe Darren will join us as well. We're going to be talking about the Salt and Sea experiment right. and the experiment that's going to be happening soon in the exact same location, but this time put together by Flat Earthers. Yeah, I know. I did not think that the IIG was going to have such a response from the Flat Earth community. It was really like beating on the side of a hornet's nest or sticking a hornet's nest in a mailbox and shaking it up because Flat Earthers has come out of everywhere. And initially, it's like, oh, no, we're not going to do the salt and sea test. We're going to do it somewhere else. And now they're, everyone's like, no, we're absolutely going to do the salt and sea test. We're going to show you how to do it right. We're not going to wait till midday and start you know, doing all this crap with balloons. We're going to shoot it the way it always should have been done. And so Nathan out there in California is leading the charge. And I think Sydney's involved and Josh Walker and a whole bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. are Most going definitely. To we'll discuss that tonight on yeah. Truth Frequency Radio with Rob Skiba at, let's say, midnight Eastern, just to make it simple. And you can figure out the time from there. Right. Um, I want to say hello to Michael of Wake the Sheeple, too. I hadn't mentioned him. And uh, Candy, I spy NASA lies. And uh, uh, bling bling the BS of the ISS. And others who have just popped in or who were here earlier. Who I, Chris Monk Seely as well. And David Blackson. And third eye first. So um, Chris Law says nice hair. Thank you. Very straight today. Just like me. Um, <laughs> going back to one really? of our conversations earlier. Really? Seriously? <laughs> so, I don't know. So, Patricia has a case of the not gays. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. I do. Although I'm super selective in that I'm most of the time not with a partner at all. Boyfriend. Yeah. I don't want to call someone a boyfriend when they'd be in their 50s, probably, or late 40s if we were dating. But it doesn't boyfriend sound weird. Significant other sounds too stilted. I and don't know. partner don't know. sounds... I mean, in the UK, they call boyfriend and girlfriend partners or person you live with partners. But the, to me, that sounds like a business. Well, arena. it's too close to life partner. Oh, yes. Yeah, my life mean? mate. My life mate. Yeah. Julia. Um, <laughs> Lance. Um, Richard. There's a thing called the Oh No podcast. Remember we talked about Ross and Carrie? Oh No, Ross oh, and Carrie. Oh No, Ross and Carrie. They have this podcast. Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, they put out their, because they were, Ross anyway, was Why, at yeah. Alton C. He put out a uh, podcast about the Salton Sea. Did he? Want me to read it? Very briefly. Uh, I'll see him read it. Sure. While Carrie is out of town, Ross and his cohorts at the Independent Investigations Group, that's the IIG, the, the blue shirts we call them, set up a test to see if the Earth is flat or a lumpy, bumpy globe. And they invite their old friend, Mark Sargent, and a cadre of flat earthers to join them. They didn't invite flat earthers, but okay, I'll give them poetic, poetic license. We invited ourselves. Anyway, arriving at the Salton Sea with some PVC pipe, balloons, and a magical camera that recovers ships lost on the horizon, these globe heads and flatties devise a fair and simple test. It wasn't fair, and it was too simplistic. Um, anyway, devise a fair and simple test of Earth's shape. We'll let you guess how that turns out. See all the pics in the vids by liking us on Facebook. <clears throat> really that was that was his thing that was my um, growl voice yeah he, <laughs> he was not uh, well again well, why where well, was where Ross was carrie in the first carrie was kind of nice the other guy jim oh, underprep was jim not Underprep. very nice yeah well hey he just got a, a shot in the arm his his social relevance what's he up to now let me look jim underdown under down, he, his under numbers actually should down. be up. Okay. Sort by upload date. Yep. Let's see if he actually hits. I'm just looking to see if he 
put anything out about the Salton Sea. I doubt it. Why not? He, in his mind, won. Because he would have taken, because he's under prep. It would have taken too long for him to, it's only been, a, what, a week? And, or, well, Ross and Carrie did something. It's on Facebook. Yeah, they're a little bit more. Not, not really. With, um, Globebuster says, you know, Bob of Globebuster says, Jim Underpants. <laughs> underpants. Um, came out uh, June 11th. Um, flat That's, Earth, Jim Underdown, Flat Earth Test, blog, Picture that Science. Was before. Yeah, that was before. So um doesn't seem like anything yet has Jim, come out. No, no. I mean, he's probably, he's just, let's face it, he was just lucky to be there. National Geographic, he got National Geographic coverage because we were there. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. And well, he got he a lot. He probably of it. thought it was the other way around, to be honest. No, he knew. He knew because that it wasn't going to happen. They weren't going to come out. The only reason they came out is because we and and we uh, the Flatters community exceeded my expectations because I only thought we'd get maybe 10 people to go maybe and we had 30 or more. I, I lost count of how many people we had and that's amazing considering it was 5 a.m. on a Sunday morning in the middle of the freaking desert <laughs> outside. I mean a way from, uh, an hour away from anything. You know, it was we were as close to San Diego as we were Los Angeles out there and we had, we had a great presence. For those we who have. don't know, James Underdown, Jim Underdown, or Jim Under Prep, as we jokingly now call him, right. um, has been the executive director of the Center for Inquiry Los Angeles yes. since 1999. Yeah, imagine that. He's got this massive wiki entry, which I'm sure he didn't write himself, and he has no social media presence at all. He is 57 years old. He was born in 1960, and he went to school at DePaul University, and he founded um, the IIG, yeah, the Independent Investigations Group. He specializes in debunking people that say they witness ghosts mm -hmm. and psychics and mediums mm -hmm. and people that manipulate audiences. That's or his specialty. Communicate mind to mind. Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking of a name. Uh, is, is it Jason, Justin, Jacqueline? Wh whatever. It doesn't matter. He, he, he goes into the audience. He infiltrates these groups and then he, and does it. And same thing with Ross and Carrie. They do that sometimes too. So did Jim Underdown go to the flat earth meetup that was in arcadia california prior to the salt and sea test a couple days before and infiltrate i saw a guy that looked like him mm -hmm. but if it was him there was nobody filming him so mm -hmm. and he didn't seem to have a camera and he didn't seem to and he talked to me but he didn't seem to be interested in any details you know if he was him he would have been i think he was getting ready for the test and right. I think he was too worried about stuff so he did he was ironing training. all those blue shirts that they all wore the we polo had shirts. literally no opposition at that meetup it was it was just a flat earth love fest everyone was was great and the only in fact the only opposition would have been the media themselves cbs what? and national geographic to me the opposition was the sun oh my god it was no, so no, no 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 <laughs> on friday not not sunday friday oh you mean at the meetup in arcadia, in arcadia yeah. yeah that was awesome that was great i mean that was i couldn't have asked for more perfect conditions it wasn't windy the you know there wasn't a blazing sun we had pizza and everybody was in a great mood fantastic mood an interesting question from chris chris law in the live chat asking me if the guitar is a rickenbacker hashtag union jack he writes uh no it is an epiphone and it's a collector's edition it, it plays if i knew how to play it and um, it's similar to the band Oasis's guitar. So it's an Epiphone Sheraton guitar, mm -hmm. which I bought for my birthday, February of 2015. In March, I found the Flat Earth Clues of 2015. And um, that bucket list, learn to play guitar, has just become an art piece on my wall. So I'm not a poser. I don't know how to play that and will never pretend to play it because I can't. I could probably learn, took a few lessons, the guitar is huge. It dominates my body. It's so, it's so heavy, but I still love it, and I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not selling it. It's, it's just it's sort of part of the room and the music. If, and if you were a poser, it would be sitting in the corner actually plugged into an amp. There is an amp here, too. Yeah, but it's not. An orange but How amp. you have it set up there, that does not scream poser. That just screams. Oh, that. I wouldn't be telling people that I bought a guitar and can't play it if I was a poser. <laughs> No, this it's is what I say. Yeah, I'm a, I'm I'm good at guitar. I've been playing for years since I was a kid, but I don't want to play it for you now. You know, eh, I'm too embarrassed. That's a poser, you. and I've met somebody like that. So, yeah. 
Gotcha. But a lot of people buy guitars and don't play them. A lot of people buy lots of things and don't use them. It's because we have the intention to get involved with this particular hobby or, you know, it's been a childhood dream and then we finally get enough money to buy the thing. Okay. You know, if, and that's something, fine. if something's hard to do, then it's not worth doing. All right. Let's just say that. Well, I think if you have a natural affinity to something, right. somehow that thing and you will discover each other and you'll start doing it at a young age. Exactly. Time and a place for everything. Mm. Almost place, everything. Places, college. <laughs> uh, bling bling, the BS of the ISS says that uh, his son, Andrew, who lives in Atlanta, is a very good guitar teacher and does that on the side. So what else is happening here? Uh, a couple of people are talking about having guitars, playing guitars, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Hello to Peanuts Clark. Thanks for being here. And Mark, Zulu One is here too. Um, Martin Lee, he, he bought a bass during his Flat Earth experience and can play the bass now. Really? Yeah. Maybe he had some affinity toward it, but he, unlike me, got it and learned to play it. Way to go. I mean, way to go. Can you play any instruments? I cannot play any instruments. They, My family tried to get me into piano growing up. Me too. I took piano lessons, and I even have the long fingers for it. Yeah, you do. You do have the long fingers for it, but it just didn't take... You know, it's, me I, too. I, I think I think mus being musically inclined is sort of a hardwired thing as well. I can kind of sing. I'm no Amber Plaster, but I'm not a horrible, oh my God, stop singing person. No, but you don't sing all the time. No, it's I'm not, not a singer, but I can not, like, you're kind of sing. Flitting around with birds on your fingers. Right. You know, singing <laughs> like when that. When I go outside, a bluebird just comes and lands on the tip of my finger. Usually. Right, yeah. right. Uh, again, I think it's like anything else because the uh, the voice is a musical instrument as well, and you either really it's it comes down to passion. Either you yes. really really love to do it or you don't. I wanted to be a singer, a la Karen Carpenter of all people. Do you remember? There it could Carpenter? be worse. Karen Carpenter was very talented. And I remember my father took me to see the Carpenters concert. I think it was in the 70s. And it was a sort of family-friendly concert. And my sister and brother and I went. And I really loved her voice. And it fit with the quality of my voice. The, 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 the She doesn't usually hit the high notes. It's more of a mid to lower tone. And I okay. could sing along with all of her songs and actually pretty well. Okay. Anytime I had to go into a high range, my voice would crack. And my mother thought about getting me voice lessons. And then we never did it. And, you know, uh, the life went on. Carpenters were a staple of the 70s. Yes. Let's face it. I mean, it's I, I know a lot of their songs by heart. Oh, sure. Because I used to sing all of them. And well, that, you know. that, and it's a, they're very, you know, her, her diction was very good. The yes, lyrics very sort clear, of like, spoken. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to a lot of songs now, which there's the, the music is so overpowering, you don't know the lyrics. Yeah. You get chronic lyricosis because yeah. you listen to what is being sung and it's saying something totally different than what you are singing right. along with. Yeah, Carpenter's simple music routine and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. brother and sister. And yeah. in the end, she ended up killing herself. She developed anorexia and she could never be too thin and basically didn't eat, yeah. died. Yeah. So sad. She needed 50 cc's, 50 cc's of sandwich. Yeah, really sad. And, you know, that sort of thing, when you look in the mirror and you see something different than the world sees, that is a part of modern society. Oh, I do that all the time. Absolutely. I look in the mirror and I go, God, why are you guys putting me on camera? <laughs> and I, I curse your name every time I have to do this show. It's like, please don't put me on camera. But other people say, oh, he's so approachable. And Well, you are approachable. You're a yeah, nice, normal, regular guy. You're yeah, in your mind, well, too. I just think there should be other people, and yet they just keep <laughs> dragging me in. National Geographic. To get out and they come, come to L.A. Let's shoot an experiment. I don't want to go. Come on. It'll be fun. Fine. Fine. Uh, Nora, no one's flower is a piano teacher. Yeah. I had a piano teacher. Her name was Mrs. Telfer, because it's a weird name, I remember. And she had a crab apple tree. I think it was crab apples in front of her house. And I would have my piano lesson, like, I don't know, one day a week. Let's say it's Tuesday. I'd go over there and pick some of these things that weren't really supposed to be eaten and eat some of them and go in. And she had 
very, well, she was very old in my mind. She was probably my age and had very veiny hands with brown spots all over them. And I had to watch her hands as she played. And then I would you know, play these very childish songs. And it, I just hated piano. I love the sound of the piano, but I didn't like Mrs. Telfer and her crab apples and her brown spot veiny hands. And it, the whole thing was just put a bad taste in my mouth. I think if I had had a different piano teacher, I would have learned. And now that I'm older, poor Mrs. Telfer. I was, you know, hating on her because she was older. I'm older now. So hmm. yeah, crab apples. Don't eat them, kids. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat them. <laughs> Good safety tip. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Do we have anything else to talk about that's flat? Earth I don't know. Do we? I don't know. We got to save something for the uh, for Rob show. <laughs> yeah, very true. Um, well, oh, Dexter Morgan is talking to D I T R H in the live chat, and I did a show with him, and it was called Flat Earth Life Hacks. You'll find it in the month of June. 2018 on my channel. Check it out. We talked about all sorts of interesting things to help you have a better life, health, and, and other things. And he talked about raising your bed, putting your bed on a, on an angle. Right, right. And, uh, line, yeah. Dexter Morgan says to D-I-T-R-H, I just rose my bed or raised my bed six inches. Thanks to you. It's a big change, but wish me luck. A lot of people are having very good results with doing that. And I still haven't done it because of the kind of bed I have. I don't think I can, but I've been propping myself up with pillows. And I know DITRH is going to say, that's not going to work. But they're very long king size pillows. And I've got it for most of my body. And I've been sleeping like that. And I don't really notice a change, but it's got to be something different than lying completely fat, flat. So well, you could just sleep in a lazy boy. Or in a coffin. I don't know anybody who does that. Mm. You know, there were some YouTubers going around saying that my brother sleeps in a coffin. Ixnay on the empire, vey. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? My brother, my poor brother, who's not even a flat earther. What? Somebody went to his Facebook page, found his pictures of when he dresses up for Halloween. And he lives in New Orleans where that sort of costuming thing is really big. He comes up with crazy costumes. This person figured that's how he looks all the time and then made a whole web pages devoted to him videos devoted to him they even made a channel and used my poor brother's picture as the as the icon hmm. I, I visited with my brother i don't did i oh yeah i did i sent you a picture right you sent me a uh, picture yeah i visited with my brother who came to houston to go to a concert in the area of sugarland and it was the band slayer because my brother loves metal i don't but he does Slayer. he went to go wow. see slayer with a really good friend of his he's been friends with forever he flew from new orleans to houston we went and had coffee together and it was cool i put a picture on my Facebook and I think on my Twitter, but we had a great time and we hadn't seen each other for about a year. And here's why, flat earth. We didn't really get in an argument, but we kind of had a, like the kind of falling out where you don't say never talk to me again, but you know, he was thinking I'm a bit nuts and uh, flat earth is crazy. And this time he, it's not that he believed in flat earth, but he was a little more open to a lot of the, um, Consp related conspiracy topics. Sure. I think he's I think he's seeing that the world is not what we've been told. So if you've got a family member that says, no, don't talk to me about that crazy flat earth stuff, you know, let them have some breathing space and maybe they'll come to part of it on their own. In the live chat, Nora of No One's Flower is talking about waterbeds. I had a waterbed. I asked for one for my 13th birthday and I received one. Yeah, be careful with those. Because why? if you, because I, in fact, there's probably a reason why I didn't never got one. And that is if the heater goes off. Oh, oh you'll die. It's you so can, cold. You can die. You can yes. die because it'll leach off the heat while you're sleeping and you'll wake up and your core temperature will drop and you're done. Wow. Well, yeah. I liked it because I lived in Michigan at the time in, in my, the latter stages of high school and it was cold in the winter. Right. And I would crank that water bed up to the highest setting possible and be toasty warm. And right. I had one of those blankets that were popular at the time, which was the late seventies. They were patchwork velvet. God, it was probably so ugly, like brown and harvest gold and pumpkin orange and very ugh, ugh. god bless the 70s but i loved yeah. it it was so fun and yeah. then when i moved out and moved on my own which was right after high school i got a boyfriend at the time to help me take apart the waterbed and he put it in his car and he put new water in i lived on a second story apartment by myself and he 
put it all together for me. And I continued to have that waterbed till one day moving from place to place as I got into radio broadcasting, oh, city to city, state to state. I said, you know what? This waterbed is a pain. This Taking this stuff, this thing around everywhere is horrible. So I started getting into sleeping on a futon. Oh, uh, yeah. I had yeah remember that? Yep. You ever have a futon? Yep, I did. I had a nice one. So funny. Yeah. I think that many people have that are within the realm of the age range we are have had these exact same experiences. Yeah, we or their I've, parents have. I've In fact, tried Charm Fear the, says her mom has a waterbed. I've slept on just about everything. Well, so. don't talk about your sex life like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a oh bed. rim okay, shot. Bed. <laughs> so don't forget to tip your waitress. Ah, uh, Eugene Twelve says, but was the waterbed level? Waterbeds prove flat Earth. There we Kinda. Go. <laughs> about the same as a bathtub proves flat earth but that's okay exactly you want to go with that that's cool problem is nobody has water beds anymore yeah maybe well i mean know, like one percent of the population says, maybe yeah charm fear says her mom does um interesting flattastic says remember the waterbed scene in nightmare on elm street i don't remember that at all i don't like those movies do you what? remember that scene waterbed scene in nightmare on elm street uh Oh, I don't think it was the original. I think it was uh, one of the sequels. A couple I, of I know people, what you're talking about, though, sure. A couple of people are talking about Tilting the Bed. Quaylu Charlie says, it sounds like a great idea. I'm going to do it. And um, Spaceman is saying, you can tilt a waterbed if you make wild love. <laughs> Glenn Parent says, I've slept in my 1966 GT Mustang. Not good. <laughs> uh, well. No. Well. All right. That's it. We've That's augured a, uh, the, the yeah, ground we've, officially. <laughs> Hashtag officially augured. Officially augured. In yeah. fact, let's make that be the secret phrase. If you've made it this far in the video, come back after it filters from live to YouTube. Or if you're watching this from YouTube itself, not live. Put officially augured. Officially augured. Hashtag and officially will, augured. <laughs> you will have to go to Google just to figure out how to spell augured. I'm going to guess on A-U-G-E-R-E-D. Am I right? Am I right? You want me to look it up? Or are you looking it up right now? I'm looking it up right now. And I put the wrong digits in A, or well, letters in A-U-G-E-R-E-D. Nope, that's not it. It's, I yeah. think, wait, A-U-G-U-R-E-D. Oh, yeah, that's You're it. You're close. Yeah, I was close. You're close. A-U-G-U-R-E-D. Maybe that's yeah. too hard of a hashtag. A now we'll go with it. Yeah, hashtag now yeah, somebody said Aud 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 Red. Somebody spelled it like you did. Two people spelled it like you did. Three people spelled it like <laughs> Bill Keith. He spelled it right, but he probably Hashtag officially augured. Yeah. That's what you put in this video when you come back later when it's on YouTube, not live stream. Right. So then people will come to the video and think that you're making a negative comment about us and the video, but I don't care. Right. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, you know, if you put something negative, they'll think that, that anyway, right. doesn't matter. <sighs> All right. Meet us tonight at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time on Truth Frequency Radio TFR. Mark and I will be potentially with Jaron on Rob Skiba's program. And we're going to be talking about the Salton Sea experiments. Right. This concludes this episode of The Secret Show, which is hashtag officially augured, and keep it flat. We have people everywhere. George Clooney. Hashtag officially augured. Really? You're not going to hit the button yet? <laughs>